Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. John Raymond, President and CEO of the Medical College of Wisconsin, and I'd like to welcome you to today's commencement ceremony. As you know, today's ceremony is unlike any other in the 128-year history of MCW. As we've had to continue to adjust the way that we celebrate momentous occasions such as graduation today, we celebrate in person with many of our graduates and virtually with many other individuals, including graduates, their families and friends, faculty and staff, and our honorees. Our celebration today reflects the continued threat of COVID-19, which has forced us to live, learn, and work differently, but by the power of science is hopefully diminishing. To our graduating students, I thank you for your flexibility, maturity, and resilience. We're proud of your response to this unprecedented challenge and to the disruption of your studies and your research over the last 14 months. Thank you for your leadership, empathy, and your trust in science. Thank you for being champions of rationality and for being extremely caring and supportive of your colleagues throughout your education and especially during the pandemic. Thanks also to those who've supported you, our graduates, during this time of distancing by connecting deeply to you with love, grace, and equanimity. To the parents, significant others, spouses, children, friends, and loved ones joining us today, we're deeply grateful to you. And to our graduates, the COVID-19 pandemic has prepared you well to meet the challenges of healthcare, science, and leadership. Today is the day that you achieve a milestone and take the next step in your lives and careers of service. Now you join the ranks of healers, scientists, and leaders as our colleagues and as our inspiration. In addition to paying tribute to our graduating students today, we're also privileged to recognize eight remarkable individuals who will receive an honorary doctoral degree one of the highest honors that an educational institution can bestow. And you'll hear from these special individuals shortly. I now would like to introduce Jay Williams, Chair of the Board of Trustees of the Medical College of Wisconsin, to offer his congratulations to the graduates. Jay? Thank you, Dr. Raymond. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, permit me to extend our sincere congratulations to each and every graduate. We take great pleasure and great pride in your singular accomplishment. As you commence on your new beginnings, we salute you and wish you well. We are confident you are all well prepared to meaningfully engage in the service of others. And so we wish you every success in this next phase of your life's journey. Congratulations and our very best wishes to you. President Raymond, members of the board, faculty leaders, family members, loved ones, and most importantly, our graduates. Today's commencement ceremony is being held at an unprecedented time in our lives. The coronavirus pandemic has changed every facet of our society and our world, and has required us here at MCW to adjust our approach to everything we do, including our education and graduation of one of this nation's most important and precious assets, you tomorrow's healthcare providers and scientists. To our graduating students, I greatly appreciate your support, flexibility, and resilience as we were forced to alter your educational and research experiences in the name of health and safety. No one could have predicted the turn of events over the past 14 months. I'm deeply grateful for the manner in which you've approached this unprecedented disruption in your graduation year. As an alumnus of the Medical College of Wisconsin and someone who has spent my entire faculty career here at MCW, I have never been prouder of the people of MCW and most particularly our learners. We are so very proud of your response to the difficulties in learning brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Facing enormous challenges, you have responded with courage, resolve, exemplary professionalism, volunteerism, qualities that exemplify the very best in those who seek to be healers and discover new knowledge to change lives. Never have these qualities been more needed than in the world today. 
I also wish to recognize those who have stood by your sides as you've navigated not only these difficult times, but also the many other times in which you've needed support and encouragement as you've reached these enormous milestones. Those family members and loved ones who are virtually watching as you receive your degrees have been an invaluable part of this journey, and I know you will thank them in a special way as you celebrate today. Your journey and upward path at MCW have prepared you well to meet the challenges of your careers. And as I have video chatted with many of you over the last several months, I know that this global pandemic has enabled your preparation and maturation for the future in ways not possible under normal circumstances. At this time, it is my great pleasure to introduce my dear friend and colleague, Lily Marks, who is our first honorary degree recipient and today's keynote speaker. Lily and I spent several years working together as members of the Board of Directors of the Association of American Medical Colleges, the AAMC, where she was a valued mentor and thought partner. She served on the AAMC board from 2015 to 2020, including a one-year term as board chair prior to my taking the helm of that board in 2019. During her insightful plenary address at the AAMC annual meeting in 2019, Lily asked more than 4,000 leaders in attendance to think and act differently in order to overcome forces that threaten the core of academic medicine, noting that demographic, economic, and political and market forces are reshaping the academic medicine landscape and converging to challenge and potentially erode the core missions of education, research, and clinical care that unify its institutions. Last year, Lily retired after a decade as Vice President for Health Affairs for the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus, which includes the University's School of Medicine, Dental Medicine, Pharmacy, and Public Health, along with the College of Nursing, Graduate School, and the University of Colorado Hospital and Children's Hospital Colorado. Prior to her health campus leadership role, Lily spent two decades as both Senior Associate Dean for Finance and Administration at the School of Medicine and as Executive Director of University of Colorado Medicine, the not-for-profit faculty practice organization. A much sought after thought leader and administrator, Lily currently serves on the Board of Directors of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City, the Fitzsimmons Redevelopment Authority, the Global Down Syndrome Foundation, and the Rose Community Foundation. She also is a member of the Corporate Board of Directors of OrthoFix Medical Incorporated. As an expert in the field of healthcare administration, Lily also has served as chair of the board of the University of Colorado Hospital and a member of the UC Health System and Children's Hospital Colorado Board of Directors. Additionally, she served on the advisory board for clinical research of the National Institutes of Health and chaired the Board of Association of Academic Health Centers. Lily has been the recipient of numerous well-deserved and prestigious recognitions, including the University of Colorado Board of Regents University Medal for her transformational contributions to the institution. She is also a past recipient of the Denver Business Journal's Outstanding Woman in Business Award and has been recognized as one of the 25 most influential women in Colorado, as well as one of the 50 most powerful people in Denver. In 2019, the publication Women, Inc named Lily as one of the nation's most influential corporate board of directors. Lily is a frequent national speaker regarding medical school economics, healthcare policy and economics, clinical practice management, and leadership issues in academic medicine. I am very grateful that Lily Marks has chosen to share her insights, wisdom, and passion for academic medicine as today's commencement keynote speaker. President Raymond, deans, faculty and graduates. I am honored and humbled to provide a few remarks on this very important day, which marks both an end and a beginning of important chapters in your life. Graduation ceremonies allow you to celebrate your hard work and accomplishments, to savor the empowerment of this moment, and to consider the possibilities that lie ahead. But although these rites of passage are largely about looking forward they are also important opportunities to recognize and thank those people in your life who have supported your journey. On this occasion, my father's words still echo in my mind. Lily, he said, I carry a lunch pail so that one day you may carry a briefcase. Your graduation today honors the sacrifices and contributions of people who have likewise supported your journey. 
You stand taller today because they allowed you to stand on their shoulders. With their support, you've achieved one of the few gifts in life that can never be taken away from you, your education. I spent considerable time thinking about what I could possibly say in a few short minutes today that would be memorable, relevant, and impactful enough that you would even remember it by dinner time. And I concluded that I probably couldn't accomplish that task on my own. So I did what many speakers before me have done. I borrowed the voices of others to help. What you just heard was an audio clip of people in cities across America and around the world raising their voices in a symphony of respect and appreciation for healthcare workers who have become the frontline warriors in the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. You started your studies at the Medical College of Wisconsin in a pre-COVID world, at a time when our society was expressing a growing distrust of government increasing cynicism about almost every profession, and an eroding belief in science and data. The pandemic has rightfully reestablished respect for health professionals and researchers. While the rest of society retreated into a socially distanced world, these courageous healers ran into the fray, risking their own well-being to save others, all the while using their expertise and ingenuity to devise new treatments, drug therapies, and vaccines. As you now join the ranks of these clinicians, researchers, and innovators, consider what will be required to maintain the mantle of trust conferred upon you today. I suggest that in part, it will require you to be active, honest, politically agnostic brokers of information, education, and clinical services steadfast in your adherence to the latest scientific knowledge and data. And it requires that you must not only do things right, you must also do the right thing, which is often far more difficult. The philosopher Soren Kierkegaard wrote, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. As I look backward on my career and experience, I'd like to impart just a small bit of what I've come to understand, illustrated by a few anecdotes, with the hope that it might be helpful as you move forward in your careers. First, honesty, integrity, and trust are not just platitudes. They are essential elements of success. Trust is the foundation and the enabler for much of what you wish to accomplish in both your personal and professional lives. Once broken, trust is difficult, if not impossible, to repair. I also learned and want to emphasize the importance of intellectual curiosity. Early in my career, I was present for a conversation I've never forgotten between the medical school dean, the chair of medicine, and the residency program director as they considered whether to terminate a resident in the middle of his training. They all agreed he was, by far, one of the smartest residents they had ever seen, but on several occasions demonstrated that he was a danger to his patients because he repeatedly refused to accept that he didn't know what he didn't know. The degrees you earn today reflect the huge reservoir of knowledge you have acquired to date. But your work is only beginning. To do right by those who entrust you with, your care, with their care, you must become a lifelong learner, accepting what you don't know and working diligently to fill in the gaps and to say, stay current with the advances. You wouldn't be here if you weren't accomplished and intelligent. But are you curious? That's more than book smarts. In my experience, intellectual curiosity is an essential ingredient of success. It is the persistent desire to know more about more, 
even if it is tangential to your work. I encourage you to broaden both your reading list and your experiential learning beyond the boundaries of your professional special specialty. Doing so will broaden your knowledge and perspectives and provide a rich and important context for the work that you do. It will propel your career and also enrich your life. Perhaps one of the most important things I've learned is that one's life and career journey is rife with paradoxes. With no absolute answer to an equation that has two valid but often conflicting variables or choices. Here are four I urge you to consider now and as you navigate what lies ahead. The first paradox relates to humility and audacity. We must all have the humility and self-awareness to recognize the limits of our knowledge and our temporal impact on the world. But we must also have the audacity to want to make the world better and to believe we can and must make it better. A few years ago, I was faced with a rare clinical diagnosis that pre presented substantial risks and required unique and exquisite skill to treat. Because of my leadership position at a major academic medical center, it was difficult not to seek treatment within our system from our own highly esteemed faculty. Instead, I journeyed a thousand miles for a procedure by someone considered the nation's leading expert. During the pre-op appointment, the physician acknowledged the political sensitivity of my decision. But then he assured me I had made the right choice because after all, why would I want to take my Mercedes to the corner gas station mechanic? That statement did more than offend me. It actually undermined my confidence, but not in the clinician's technical skill. The alarm bells that went off in my head regarded the inherent risk of entrusting my care to someone whose raging ego might cloud his clinical judgment at a critical moment. As clinicians and scientists, you have the ability to change lives and to save lives. It takes a good bit of audacity to exercise that much impact and power over another human's life and well being. But it also requires the humility to acknowledge that your interventions will inevitably create varying degrees of risk for your patients. And there will be things you just can't fix. More often than not, doing the right thing will require you to navigate a razor thin line balancing the counterweights of audacity and humility. The second paradox is the tension between principle and principle. By definition, principle, spelled P-L-E, represents a fundamental belief or value of an individual, of an organization or society. Principle, spelled P-A-L, is the financial condition, definition of the word. Throughout your career, you will encounter circumstances that create significant tension and conflict between the two. Your personal financial demands and lifestyle expectations, combined with the expectations of your workplace, can create pressure to generate more revenue, to increase patient volumes, to publish more papers, or win more grants. While these are all valid goals, they sometimes converge to challenge your fidelity to the core principles of integrity, honesty, patient safety. Successfully navigating this par paradox is central to upholding the solemn oaths of professional conduct you will take during today's commencement ceremony. I urge you to consider how much daylight, if any, is acceptable between principle and principle. Third, the U.S. healthcare system is itself a paradox of exceptional achievement and shameful disparities. Scientific breakthroughs coexist with a sparse public health infrastructure and a health equity crisis that for many 
fails to meet even basic human needs. America has proven we can develop multiple vaccines in record time to battle a world-altering illness. Yet our country's life expectancy and health status lags much of the developed world due to a lack of prevention and access to care. This past year, as our healthcare system's expertise and nobility soared, its flaws were laid bare, bare and magnified. COVID may be in retreat, but now we must face the long festering virus we haven't failed to diagnose, but we have yet to treat. Fighting the public health inequity pandemic will require more than a timely vaccine, adequate bed capacity, and PPE. If we are to sustain the mantle of trust we've earned in the past year, we must all work earnestly to address the issue of health, in, health equity and the social determinants of health. Finally, I ask you to consider the paradox of technology and artificial intelligence versus human and emotional intelligence. I suspect many of you have at some point in your life imagined yourself proudly entering a patient room in your white coat with a stethoscope around your neck. Over a century ago, the stethoscope became a major diagnostic advance in medicine. Since then, medical research enhanced by waves of new technology and bioinformatics capability have produced stunning scientific advances, pharmaceutical breakthroughs, and major improvements in clinical care. Today, we are on the threshold of another significant advance, the new era of artificial intelligence. Yet as transformational as these advances will be, for how and where care is delivered and by whom, they augment but cannot replace human intelligence and human interaction. Keystrokes cannot replace eye contact. Technology is no substitute for empathy and humanism. Robots cannot address the fears and anxieties of patients who turn to us in the most vulnerable moments of their lives. Only you can fill those voids. You cannot just use your stethoscope as a tool to listen to your patient's hearts. Your most important tool is to listen with your heart. Only then can you understand the full dimension of your patient's symptoms, diseases, and wishes. That will allow you to deliver customized, patient-centered care and will enable you to form that sacred partnership with your patients. It is that human partnership that defines the healthcare heroes of today and the future. Thank you for the opportunity to share these humble observations on this special day. My career has many, many more yesterdays than tomorrows. But you, class of 2021, you are our tomorrow with the power and responsibility to artfully navigate through these many paradoxes and to help shape what healthcare in America looks like in the years ahead. Congratulations. Thank you, Lily, for the wonderful remarks to the graduating students. Hello and congratulations to the class of 2021. It's so nice to be with you on this very special day. I'm Matt Goldblatt, president of the MCW and Marquette Medical Alumni Association. I graduated from MCW in 1997. I completed my residency in 2004, and I've been on the faculty here since 2009. On behalf of the MCW and Marquette Medical Alumni Association, I welcome you to our proud and accomplished community. You have received your education and training at an institution that not only teaches you the latest methods, treatments, and standards of care, but develops them. Reflections of the past year highlight the importance of physicians, scientists, pharmacists, and healthcare leaders illustrating the enormity of our pledge to dedicate ourselves to the service of humanity. The Alumni Association is an important resource.
that builds a lifetime connection to the Medical College of Wisconsin and each other. Please be sure to stay connected and maintain a strong relationship with each other and with MCW. Students will always need to connect with alumni like you. I wish you all the best in what I'm sure will be exciting and fulfilling careers as both healthcare providers and leaders. Thank you. I am honored to be sponsoring Michelle Ford to receive an honorary doctorate of humanities degree from MCW. I believe Michelle has earned this prestigious honor because of her dedication to community through leadership roles with the Alliance for Children and Families, United Neighborhood Centers of Milwaukee, and her board leadership in particular with America's Black Holocaust Museum, to name a few. Throughout Michelle's career, she has been a tireless advocate and laser focused on the issue of population health and its importance to making Milwaukee and our region and community a better place for all. Congratulations, Michelle. Greetings, MCW faculty, students, and friends. I'd first like to thank the Medical College of Wisconsin for this tremendous honor. I am proud to be among the ranks of so many other distinguished leaders receiving this recognition. I present myself to you humbly before you as standing on the shoulders of my mother, Harriet Ford, a single mother of four who paved the way for me as a single mother of four to be the first generation college graduate and to go on to attain a master's degree in our family. She has inspired me through hard work while serving all mankind with a giving heart. I look forward to continuing mom's legacy through passing all these same values on to my children and my grandchildren, and also by continuing to serve as a mentor for future generations of students who will champion our efforts in this country to achieve a more healthy and equitable society. I truly believe now is the time to transform healthcare through systems change to achieve equity. Graduates, it's your time. Make it count. I am honored to be sponsoring Dr. Eve Hall to receive the Honorary Doctorate of Humanities degree from the Medical College of Wisconsin. I believe Dr. Hall has earned this prestigious award because of her dedication to community, particularly through her leadership of the Milwaukee Urban League, the African American Chamber of Commerce, and her leadership roles within the state of Wisconsin. Throughout Dr. Hall's career, she has brought people together from all backgrounds and experiences with the goal of making Milwaukee, the region, and the state better by focusing on issues of health, economics, employment, and race. Congratulations, Dr. Hall. Thank you, Medical College of Wisconsin, and especially to you, Dr. John Raymond, for considering me for this honorary doctorate. You know how surprised I was and how humbled I was to receive that call from you. The Medical College of Wisconsin is doing phenomenal things in regards to COVID-19. So to receive this type of an honor is really special to me, given the disproportionate number of African-Americans and other people of color that have been affected by this pandemic. So what does this mean for me? It encourages me, it inspires me to do even more in the arena that I now hold. And what I would encourage the Medical College of Wisconsin graduates to do is to really stand for health equity and to help ensure that as many people as possible are healthy. We are an interdependent society and the more of us that are healthy, the better we are as a whole. Thank you again. My name is John Moyer professor and director of the Institute for Health and Equity at MCW. I'm delighted to sponsor Mr. George Hinton to receive the Honorary Doctorate of Humanities. I believe Mr. Hinton earned this prestigious honor because of his dedication to health, economic, and social development of people in Milwaukee, especially those experiencing the challenges of poverty. Throughout his career as director with Children of Wisconsin, president of Aurora Sinai Medical Center, and CEO of the Social Development Commission in Milwaukee, George has led people, built relationships and teams, acted strategically, and courageously advocated for vulnerable people. We honor his work to strengthen families, to support the dreams of youth, 
and to support economic vitality in Milwaukee. I want to thank Dr. John Moyer and Dr. John Raymond and the Medical College of Wisconsin for this opportunity to join the ranks of these distinguished honorary degree recipients. I hope in the future our graduates will continue to enhance the health of our community and become champions and advocates for those most vulnerable. On a personal note, I want to thank and recognize my grandmother, my mother, my children, and my extended circle of family and friends. Thank you. I'm Dr. Art Dursey, professor and director of the Center for Bioethics and Medical Humanities at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I'm sponsoring Richard N. Katschke to receive the Honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters. Dick Katschke has earned this prestigious honor because of his long and strong dedication to MCW. He led MCW's Public Affairs Department for 30 years, telling the compelling stories of our work to our community, our state, and the nation. He finished as the longest serving medical school communications leader in the United States. Since his appointment in 2016 as MCW's chief historian, he has worked on telling MCW's longer story over its century and a quarter of existence in his comprehensive book, Knowledge Changing Life, A History of the Medical College of Wisconsin, 1893 to 2019. Dick Keschke is MCW's storyteller extraordinaire. I'm extremely grateful to MCW for bestowing me with this honor. Uh, this is the 36th commencement ceremony that I've witnessed at MCW, and I always wonder what becomes of the graduates. As MCW's chief historian, I've seen these MCW graduates go on to become accomplished physicians and scientists, leaders in academic medicine, including here at MCW, and even dean of MCW School of Medicine. I know that if in the future, I'm a patient and our paths should cross, I will be in good hands. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Cheryl Marana. As an MCW professor and a senior vice president, it is my honor to sponsor Dr. Paula Lucy as a recipient of the Doctor of Medical Science honorary degree. Dr. Lucy is the epitome of a servant leader and she is an inspiration to us all. She is an exemplar of the profession of nursing and instills those values in future nurses. She has an unwavering commitment to improving health in our communities and to communities and academics working in genuine partnership toward that goal. As a leader once said, leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that the impact lasts well beyond your absence. Paula, you are just such a leader. I know you will continue to inspire us toward healthier communities. I wanna thank the Board of Trustees and President Raymond for this outstanding award. And, and it's going to be the highlight of my career and I really appreciate this honor. I also wanna thank Dr. Cheryl Marana, who's been my mentor, my partner and my friend. We've done a lot of these accomplishments together and I'm very appreciative of her activities and her contribution to my success. I'm dedicating this award to my father, Thomas Lucy. My father was the first person in his family to go to college. Since then, all of his children and all of his grandchildren have gone to college, most with multiple degrees. And he, when he decided to go to college, it wasn't because of the people that were supposed to be encouraging him to go to college. It wasn't because of school counselors or his parents. It was because of random people that he trusted and that were, had influence on him. People like physicians. And you as physicians of the future should think about how you can do that. If you view your patients as holistic as nurses do, and as I would know my good friend, Dr. Raymond will say, nurses rock, nurses view patients holistically. Remember that your patients have a life outside of your clinic room, outside of the hospital, and think about how you might influence them to improve their lives in a positive way. Thank you very much. It's my honor to act as a sponsor to honorary degree recipients Mr. Corey Nettles and Mr. Tim Sheehy. Mr. Corey Nettles was nominated for the Honorary Doctor of Humanities degree 
to recognize his unwavering dedication and commitment to the Medical College of Wisconsin, the city of Milwaukee, and the state of Wisconsin. Corey's been an invaluable member of the MCW Board of Trustees for the last 15 years, including serving as its president from 2018 to 2020, and is the managing director of Milwaukee-based private equity firm, Generation Growth Capital Incorporated, he champions and bolsters small businesses. Corey also is a former secretary of the Wisconsin Department of Commerce and is a former partner with the Milwaukee-based law firm Quarles and Brady LLP. Corey has mentored many young people and he's worked to diversify the workforce. He's also worked to raise funds for many organizations that are focused on improved educational and work opportunities for economically disadvantaged youth, and he serves on many diversified boards of directors across the region and the state. I wanna thank the Medical College of Wisconsin for bestowing this great honor upon me. I'm deeply humbled and honored to be joining a very esteemed group of prior recipients. Given the events of the last year or so with the COVID pandemic and its impact on our community, I become so much aware of the important and vital role that the Medical College of Wisconsin plays in our community in terms of our overall public health. I also am mindful of the important role that our graduates, now doctors, play in assuring the health and safety of our community. I'm extremely excited about the difference that I know you current graduates will play uh, in making our community healthy and safe. Congratulations on your graduation. And thanks again to the Medical College of Wisconsin for bestowing this honor upon me. Congratulations and thanks, Corey. Mr. Timothy R. Sheehy was nominated for the Honorary Doctor of Humanities degree to recognize his exemplary leadership as president of the Metropolitan Milwaukee Association of Commerce in helping to improve Metro Milwaukee as a place to invest capital, grow businesses, create jobs, and ensure the health and well-being of our people and our community. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Tim has been an invaluable partner to MCW as we've continued to provide trusted, science-based information and candid conversations about the intersection of health and the economy in Southeastern Wisconsin. This partnership has helped business leaders and influencers, including elected officials throughout the state, to make well-informed and time-sensitive decisions about COVID-19 and the economy. It's also provided these individuals with an open channel for questions on a wide range of COVID and business related topics. Well, I'm grateful and humbled to join those who have received this honorary degree from such a distinguished organization as the Medical College of Wisconsin. You know, if ever there was a year to highlight the need for the science of medicine and the value of the healthcare profession, 2020 was it. So my message to you as graduates, go forth to a world that needs you now more than ever. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you, Tim. And congratulations to all of our honorary degree recipients. So to all eight of today's honorary degree recipients, by virtue of the authority delegated to me upon recommendation of the commencement committee, and by action of the Medical College of Wisconsin Board of Trustees, I confer upon you doctorate degrees from the Medical College of Wisconsin, honoris causa. Congratulations. Now at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ravi Misra, Dean of the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences. Thank you, President Raymond. Good morning, graduates, family, friends, and loved ones. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of the MCW Graduate School, I wanna congratulate the class of 2021 for a job well done. Today is a day for you and your family to celebrate, and it is a day for our extended MCW family to celebrate your considerable achievements. However, as Dr. Raymond has alluded to, this graduation is like no other and reflects the extraordinary times we find ourselves in. We all live in the time of a pandemic. COVID-19 has stolen so much from all of us. It has stolen people's jobs, their health, 
and for many, their very lives. It has also stolen the opportunity for many of us to work side by side with colleagues. And for many of you graduating today, the opportunity to celebrate your years of hard work with your friends, family, and colleagues. But our inability to celebrate in the traditional manner does not diminish from your accomplishments. And most importantly, what this pandemic has not stolen from us is what today signifies, the extraordinary importance of what you have achieved. And make no mistake about it, an advanced degree from a world-class institution is an extraordinary achievement. What this pandemic has shown all of us is just how vulnerable we all are and how much we depend on each other. And it has reminded us that a basic existential tenant of a society is a need to look out for and take care of each other. But as I think of you, our students, what it has also shown me is how much grit and resilience you have, you all have. I don't think you can see it, but underneath this mask, I am in awe of you. Not only have you not wilted in these extraordinarily difficult times, but you have thrived. You are a class that has been tested by unprecedented adversity and passed that test with flying colors. You have been forged in fire, and I have no doubt you can meet and master any challenge the future throws your way. As the timeless and famous bard and playwright William Shakespeare once wrote, sweet are the uses of adversity, which, like the toad, ugly and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. I have no doubt that you now all possess that precious jewel. What these times should also reaffirm to all of us is the essentiality of science and intellectual honesty. It is careful, rigorous science and rational thought that has so far gotten us through these tough times. And it will be you, our next generation of scientists and healthcare workers, that the world will depend on to turn to and prevent future health scourges and pandemics like this one. With those thoughts in mind, I would now like to ask all our graduates to stand, so if you can all stand up, for the recitation of the MCW Graduate School Oath. So this oath signifies your commitment to our MCW academic core values and our commitment to the commonly accepted ethical values of the academic scientific community. So please repeat after me and speak loud behind those masks, okay? I want to be able to hear you up here. I do hereby promise to conduct myself in a manner deserving of inclusion in the community of scholars that I joined today. By fostering collegiality and engagement, I will disavow prejudice. Never allowing financial gain, competition, or ambition to cloud my judgment. In the ethical conduct of my craft. I will act with honesty, integrity, and objectivity. In the pursuit of constructive knowledge that furthers my discipline and benefits society as a whole. Finally, I will honor the foundation of knowledge that has come before me. And the promise of new discoveries to come. As signified by the oath that you all just took and as scientists and scholars, you are part of a centuries-old calling to understand the world around you using the tools of rational empirical inquiry and intellectual honesty. As you go forward and make your careers and take up the urgent challenges of the day, I ask you to carry the torch of the scientific tradition high and be emissaries to society of this powerful and noble tradition. Please remain standing for the conferral of your degree. President Raymond, please join me in the front of the, in, 
on the stage as we, I present these candidates to you. President Raymond, on behalf of the faculty of the Medical College of Wisconsin, I present these candidates for the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Medical Physiology, and Master of Public Health, and recommend that their respective degree be conferred upon them. Thank you, Dean Mizra. Candidates, by the authority delegated to me, I confer upon you the respective degrees of Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Medical Physiology, or Master of Public Health, and pronounce you now graduates of the Medical College of Wisconsin. Congratulations, and you may now be seated. I now invite Dr. Neil Hogg, Associate Dean of Student Affairs for the Graduate School of Biomedical Sciences to introduce our graduates. Neil. Thank you, Dr. Raymond. Good morning. At this time, we will begin to call our graduates and their mentors forward. We will start with the graduates who are with us in person in alphabetical order by degree. As there are not too many of us in the auditorium today necessarily, you're gonna have to make enough noise for a big crowd as our students get their HUDs and degrees. Um, we will start with our Doctor of Philosophy graduates. Dr. Teresa Bloom. Teresa completed her studies in the Cell and Developmental Biology program, and she will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Nan Ju. Teresa studied blood cell development in acute myeloid leukemia. <laughs> Dr. Michelle Casillo completed her studies in the Cell and Developmental Biology program. She will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Rashmi Sood. Michelle studied the role of platelets in placenta-mediated pregnancy complications. <laughs> Dr. Acacia Dishman completed her studies in the biochemistry program. She will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Brian Volkman. Acacia investigated how some proteins have evolved to switch between different structures. <laughs> Dr. Ashley Seco completed her studies in the microbiology and immunology program. She will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Yiguang Chen. Ashley explored the role of interleukin-27 in the development of autoimmune diabetes. <laughs> Dr. Ethan Duell completed his studies in the biophysics program. He will be hooded by Dean Dr. Ravi Misra on behalf of Ethan's mentor, Dr. Ted Dio. Ethan studied visual system miswiring in albinism. Dr. Melanie Gartz. Melanie completed her studies in the Cell and Developmental Biology program. She will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Jennifer Strand. Mel Melanie demonstrated how injured cells can promote further heart damage in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. <laughs> Dr. Achia Katun completed her studies in the Microbiology and Immunology program. She will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Weiguo Tsui. Achia investigated how a transcription factor is important for immune cell function and autoimmunity. <laughs> Dr. Rachel Lindemann completed her studies in the Cell and Developmental Biology program. She will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Joseph Carroll. Rachel assessed the utility of potential biomarkers for a variety of progressive retinal disorders. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Proudfoot completed her studies in the biochemistry program and will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Daisy Sahu. Sarah characterized a human lipid receptor variant that relates to higher plasma cholesterol and heart disease.
Dr. Sarah Sees completed her studies in the cell and developmental biology and basic and translational science programs and will be hooded by Dean Mizra on behalf of her mentor, Dr. Eleanor Samina. Sarah investigated the role of a specific protein in eye development and disease using a zebrafish model. <laughs> Dr. Abdul Shaw completed his studies in the public and community health program. He will be hooded by his mentor, Dr. Laura Cassidy. Abdul studied intimate part partner violence victimization in Wisconsin mothers. <laughs> Dr. Antoinette Spector completed her studies in the public and community health program. She will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Julia Dixon Gomez. Antoinette investigated how social factors affect opioid misuse in treatment-seeking women. <laughs> Dr. Michael Totoritis completed his studies in the public and community health program. He will be hooded by his mentor, Dr. Mallory O'Brien. Michael utilized predictive modeling to identify key issues that contribute to child welfare outcomes. <laughs> Dr. Erica Wirtz completed her studies in the Cell and Developmental Biology program and will be hooded by her mentor, Dr. Joseph Carroll. Erica investigated why people with albinism have visual defects. Dr. Jonathan Young completed his studies in the Cell and Developmental Biology and Basic and Translational Sciences programs. He will be hooded by his mentor, Dr. Iris Kassem. Jonathan characterized the juvenile rabbit as an ideal model for studying complications of pediatric eye surgery. I now invite our dual degree Master of Science and Medical Degree candidate to the stage, Haley Hayes, hooded by Dr. Leonard Agedi. Haley will be receiving her degree in the medical school this afternoon at the School of Medicine ceremony. <laughs> Master of Arts in Bioethics, Candid uh, next. Uh, the candidate will be hooded by Dr. Fabrice Jotterand. Sydney Schoenrock. <laughs> the Master of Medical Physiology candidates will be hooded by Dr. Matthew Hodges. Marissa Gaspari. <laughs> Anam Mohammed. Jordan Palmer. <laughs> Master of Public Health candidates will be hooded by Dr. John Moyer. Dr. Keisha Adams. Shannon O'Hara. <laughs> Julie Schumann.
congratulations, everyone. I would now like to introduce you to the graduates who are with us virtually today. The candidates for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Dr. Pooja Agawal, Dr. Kali Arubin, Dr. Hoon Choi, Dr. Chaati Dorsen, Dr. Samantha Gies, Dr. Emily Gronseth, Dr. Yizeng He, Dr. Caitlin Heimbrook, Dr. Alexander Helfand, Dr. Mofei Huang, Dr. Kelsey Kalos, Dr. Tucker Keiter, Dr. Juan Liu, Dr. Valerie Lozada Fernandez, Dr. Maribel Marquez, Dr. Sean McGarry, Dr. Lara Rhyme, Dr. Alexander Salmon, Dr. Rachel Schlake, Dr. Charles Spanbauer, Dr. Denisha Spires, Dr. Joshua Stafford, Dr. Yayun Hu. The candidates for the degree of Master of Science. Nazik Abdallah Abdel Raham, Lauren Bauer, Eden Biltibo, Alyssa Buzalaki, Panna Codner, Chandler Cortina, Samuel DeLouis, Molly Gangler, Jemlin George, Dongwan Lee, David McKean, Devashish. Mukherjee, Stefano Rosati, Kayla Schwartz, Courtney Smith, Xinming Wei, Dawn Wolfgram. The candidates for the degree Master of Arts Elizabeth DeVore, Ian Griffin, Kelsey Lamb, Elizabeth McLean, Alison Nugent, Erin Rawl. The candidates for the degree Master of Medical Physiology Michaela Althaus, David Brown, Maya Gunther, Michelle Ho, El Marique, Isabella Pulse. The candidates for the degree Master of Public Health Usman Amin, Randall Bass, Janet Malman, Nicholas Mao, Elizabeth Perath, Sukhdeep Randavar. Congratulations to all of our graduates. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to invite Dr. Misra back to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Hogg. I would now like to move on to the Outstanding Dissertation Awards presentation. Since 1969, the Friends of Medical College of Wisconsin have been raising funds to support the educational mission of MCW by donating money to graduate and medical students. To date, the Friends have donated more than $1.5 million in monetary gifts to support student scholarships, service awards, dissertation awards, summer research fellowships, and travel awards for both medical and graduate students. This year, the Friends of the Medical College of Wisconsin donated $13,500 directly to graduate students in the form of travel awards, poster session awards, scholarships, and dissertation awards. This remarkable group of women truly are Friends of the Graduate School. Each year, the Friends give three outstanding dissertation awards two of which will be presented this afternoon. The winners of the Outstanding Dissertation Award for 2021 are 
Casey Dishman for her dissertation titled Function, Evolution, and Design of Protein Metamorphosis. Casey was mentored by Dr. Brian Volkman in the Biochemistry Graduate Program. Congratulations, Casey. <laughs> and the other award was given to Erica Wirtz for a dissertation titled Understanding Visual System Structure and Function Through Retinal and Cortical Pathology. Erica was mentored by Dr. Joseph Carroll in the Cell and Developmental Biology Graduate Program. Congratulations, Erica. <laughs> Great job. Finally, before I turn the podium back to President Raymond, I would like to give special thanks to those loved ones that supported our graduates. I've been around colleges and universities for a lot longer than I care to remember. If there's one thing I have learned, it is this. While our graduate accomplishments are formidable, and they are, not one of today's graduates got here alone. All of them have received the support and encouragement of someone close to them. There is no doubt without your love, sacrifice, and support that our graduates would not be where they are today. So on behalf of our graduating students and the graduate school faculty, I would like to salute the families, partners, and special friends have supported, who have supported and sacrificed for our graduating students. Congratulations to you and thank you for your perseverance. I now invite President Raymond back to the podium for final remarks. Thank you, Robbie, and thanks to everyone here. Um, in closing, again, I thank you for choosing the Medical College of Wisconsin and for entrusting us with your education and your well being. On behalf of our faculty, staff, alumni, and board of trustees, we welcome you into the profession as colleagues. And we eagerly anticipate your future successes, accomplishments, and contributions to the betterment of humankind. This now concludes our commencement ceremony, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Ushers will escort our faculty hooders out of the auditorium first, followed by the graduates, our new colleagues, by row to return to their, re to return to their regalia and to receive your degrees. Thank you. <laughs>